Tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. (laughs) Escape! Brought to you by the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York and the independent marketers of Richfield gasolines, motor oils, and other petroleum products. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Tonight, we escape to a small town on the California coast, behind whose scenes exists a world of terror, blackmail, and death. As H.B. Dixon tells it in his exciting new novel, Something for Nothing. The moon wasn't up yet. It was after nine and as dark as my pocket and I was still a hundred miles below San Francisco. The coast route is tricky driving, too. The road dips and curves like a squirming snake smack up against the mountains on one side and on the other a sheer long drop to the sea. But I was driving north and I had the inside lane, which wasn't so bad. And I kept bowling right along. And then about three miles below Bayside, I was going into a sharp curve to the right when beyond it, coming toward me, though... Lights of another car flared up, a big cream-colored sedan on the wrong side of the road bearing down on me. I slammed on my brakes and skidded sideways. The other car barely skinned past, and I saw a woman hanging halfway out the door on the driver's side looking scared to death. She didn't even try to make the turn. Our car went straight for the lip of the cliff, and just as it went over, the woman jumped. And the car went smashing down the face of the cliff, easy, a 200-foot drop all the way to the ocean. Hey! Hey, are you all right? Well, maybe she slid over. Hey there. Oh. What? Where are you? Don't, don't bother. Oh, there you are. I'm, I'm all right. I, oh. Here. Here, hold on. Oh. Don't fall over the edge now. I'm, I'm a little shaky. There we go. I didn't see your car not till the last second. I... <laughs> Look, lady, I didn't run oh. you off the road. You, you were way over on my side. Oh, I didn't mean it was your fault, my... My brakes failed. I was coming down the grate. I guess I, I lost my head. Well, you could have made it all right without brakes. You weren't going very fast. Oh. I can't see your car down there. Well, it's probably underwater. Might have landed on the rocks, huh? No, I, I heard it splash. Oh. Uh, can I drive you anywhere? I wasn't going your way. Oh, that's but, uh... all right. I'll, I'll go back to Bayside. I was going to see some friends down the road, but I... I don't feel like seeing them now. You can drop me in town. Uh, fine, I, I'd be glad to. Oh. Whoa, whoa, you're pretty wobbly. Yeah, let me help you. It was a shock, I guess. Yeah, that was a close one. Uh, say, uh, wait a minute. Hmm? There wasn't anybody else in that car, was there? No. No, I was alone. <laughs> You live in Bayside? Yes. I might stop off there tonight overnight. Well, you, you couldn't possibly find a room tonight. The uh, the tourist season started. Well, I might find something in a motel. Oh, I'm somewhere. sure everything's full up. And it's, uh, it's easy driving beyond Bayside. No more mountains if you're going to San Francisco. Yeah, that's where I'm going. Uh, do you live in San Francisco? Oh, I, I did when I was a kid. Uh, lately, I've been living in L.A. I've been working in pictures. Oh. For a while, I... Uh, <laughs> Thought I'd be another Clark Gable or a Robert Taylor or something. Every agent in town was after me, but uh, you know how it is. It didn't pan out. Why not? You're handsome. Oh, sure. Too handsome. I photographed too slick. I saw I'd never be anything but third rate, so I got out. Yes, I suppose that's sensible. Well, welcome Bayside City Limits. (laughs) Now, where do I take you? Uh, Straight ahead. Huh? Uh, This is Surf Avenue. It'll take you through to the main highway. Well, where do you live? Oh, you don't have to take me there. Uh, stop here. Well, why here? I'm going to the police station to report the accident. Well, don't you want me to go along and be a witness? Oh, no, I, I'm sure that isn't necessary. Uh, 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 have a nice trip to San Francisco. Thanks. Uh, you are going right through, aren't you? Uh, I guess so. Well, you'll be there in two hours. Uh, yes, I, I know. Yes, well, well, thanks again and goodbye. 
was something funny about that dame. Something was worrying her besides that accident. The way she acted toward me, for instance. All she cared about was getting me out of town fast. So, naturally, I decided to stay a while to find out why. I found a room without any trouble at all, and then I walked around Bayside. I liked what I saw. The cars, the stores, the way the women were dressed. Yeah, Bayside was loaded with money. And then sometime after midnight, I dropped into a bar. One of the customers was yawking away to the bartender. I ordered scotch over rice and listened in. She phoned the station about an hour ago and said Frank wasn't the type to go somewhere and not let her know. That was the customer, a big moon-faced man with a red neck who had cop written all over him. Pinedo didn't sooner or later bust loose. <laughs> what do you know? Frank's gone off out of there. Well, I told her we'd check around. Hey, she say Frank was driving that cream-colored job of his? My heart jumped like a hooked oh, trout. He sure can't disappear far in that car. It was hard to keep the excitement out of my voice. Uh, uh, pardon me, but uh, what color car did you say? Huh? Well, I just drove in from L.A. and I passed a cream-colored sedan a few miles back. Well, you couldn't miss this one. Darnest color you ever saw. Huh? The ornament on the hood is a big pair of dice. Well, the one I saw, a woman was driving. No, no, Frank never lets anyone drive his car. Well, Gaston doesn't know how to drive, does she? Oh, sure she does, Chief. She just got a new convertible, only, you know, she doesn't go out much. Doesn't drink, doesn't no. wear makeup, doesn't do anything much, and she <laughs> sure is a mousy woman. <laughs> She went to bed tonight at 9 o'clock on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me, who is this Gassner? Uh, well, he, he owns this bar, a couple of restaurants, and he owns a Domino Cottage. He calls it a dude ranch, but it's really a gambling house. Oh, an important man, huh? Yeah, he is, and uh, he isn't. He's got money, but... Uh, a gambler doesn't rate with the local snobs. Oh, Bayside's one of those towns. Cream de la cream, mister. Some of the oldest families in California live here. So money doesn't count. Not huh? without a pedigree, mister. It sure don't. <laughs> but money counts with me, especially easy money. To get something for nothing, that's the sweetest thing in life. Well, I finished my drink and went to the phone booth. First, I looked up Frank Gassner's address, 16 Yucca Drive, and I wrote it down. Then I put through a long-distance call to my pal Danny in San Francisco. He said he'd meet me in Bayside in a couple of days. When I left the phone booth, the redneck cop had left, and the bartender was getting ready to close up. I decided not to wait till morning to drop in at 16 Yucca Drive, so I paid the bartender and was halfway through the door Mr. when... Devin. It jarred me having somebody know my name in that town that particular night. I turned around fast. Gil Devin. What? What's your hurry, Gil? Don't you want to buy me a drink? I don't know you from Adam, baby. <laughs> well, I know you. I know your name, rank, and uh, serial number. Oh. <laughs> oh, I dropped that identification bracelet again, huh? In the phone booth. I went in right after you. Here you are. Thank you. The uh, catch keeps coming open all the time. You uh, ought to have it fixed? Yeah, I guess so. But every time I lose it, it gets back to me somehow. Well, how about my reward? Oh? Huh? Like what? We could start with a drink. Well, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I'd, I'd love to, but uh, I've got a date. That hardly comes as a surprise with shoulders like yours. Now, uh, what does she have that I don't have? Only one thing, sweetheart, and uh, it's not beauty. But what she has, there's no substitute for. <gasps> Hello, Mrs. Kessner. You forgot to lock the front door. What? Why didn't you go to San Francisco? Well, when I get a feeling I'm not wanted, that's when I stick around to find out why. Well, there was no reason for you to feel that way. I... Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, is there anybody else in the house? No, I sent the maid home for the night. Oh, that's good. That's real good. I uh, just heard a couple of chatty men in a bar talking about a husband who hadn't come home and a wife who'd gone to bed at 9 o'clock. I don't see why you've come here to tell me Stop that. Stop stalling. The husband's name was Frank Gassner, and you're the wife. And at 9.30, you were out on the highway driving his car over the cliff. I saw it go over, remember? 
If I give you $2,000, will you leave town? You don't think I'd let a thing like this go for $2,000? But I shouldn't pay you anything at all. I haven't done anything. So you'll pay me $2,000 for nothing? Well, these, these circumstances are peculiar. Yeah, I'll say it... they are. Your husband was in that car. You murdered him. Oh. Well, uh, how much money do you want? Oh, later, later. First, tell me about it. <laughs> Everything. Well, come on, come on, give. How did you kill him? I... I heard him drive into the garage, but he didn't come into the house. And I found him asleep in the car. He'd been drinking. Passed out cold? Yes, he often did that. I'd been waiting for a chance to kill him. So I started the car and closed all the windows and ran a hose from the exhaust pipe in close to his face. When I went out later, he was dead. Oh, carbon monoxide. I knew it might not look like an accident because he was too drunk to have closed the garage doors. So I drove down the highway and... Well, you know the rest. Ah, you had it all figured out, didn't you? You'd wait for a truck driver, a woman in distress. He'd pick you up, drop you off near home. Truck drivers always stick to their schedule, so he'd keep right on going fast, no time for questions. <laughs> but instead of one of those nights of the road, I came along. Yes, you came along. How much money do you want? Oh, you can't pay me off. Not with cash. I'll give you $10,000 and not a cent more. You what? <gasps> Don't tell me what you'll do or what you won't do. From now on, you'll do what I say. But you can't prove anything. Shall I phone the police? You saw the car go over the cliff, but you can't prove I was there. It's your word against mine. And you think they'll take yours? <gasps> well, they, they might, seeing that I'm a stranger, except for one thing. You didn't have a purse when I picked you up on the road. No. No, it's in the car. I forgot. It has my initials on it. Oh, please, I, I must get it back. Can you get it, please, please? Well, the car's probably underwater. No, please. Well, I'll rent a plane and fly down there and look. Probably have to use a boat to get oh, to the car. Try. A as soon as you can. Tomorrow. Well, that's a little too soon. No, please, before someone saves the car. Just a minute, Mrs. Gassner. First, you and I have to come to a little understanding. Oh, anything. I, I'll give you anything. <laughs> you mean everything, don't you, Belle? What is xylene? A petroleum chemist will tell you that xylene is one of the highest octane components of gasoline known to science. But here's what's important to you. Xylene is contained in every gallon of Richfield gasoline. Let me repeat that. Xylene, one of the highest octane components known to petroleum science, is contained in every gallon of Richfield gasoline. Xylene helps give Richfield gasoline that full power wallop that jumps you out ahead in traffic. That smooth, surging power that eats up the miles and levels off the hills. Furthermore, there's a Richfield gasoline to fit the power requirements of your motor. Select Richfield Ethyl for best results in the highest compression motors or Richfield High Octane at regular price for the average motor. Each Richfield brand is tops in its class. Don't waste gasoline. Don't waste money. Let the Richfield dealer help you select the right gasoline for your car. Remember, every gallon of Richfield gasoline contains xylene, one of the highest octane components known to petroleum science. And now we return you to... Escape. Ah, it was going to be a gold mine. For a start, Belle Gassner went to the bank next day and got me $10,000 cash. Then she made out a power of attorney for me. The next afternoon, I flew down the coast on a rented plane and spotted the car wedged into the rocks right side up under 20 feet of water. The next day, Belle and I went down in a cabin cruiser and dropped anchor as close to the rocks as we did. Uh, let the anchor out all the way there. Well, it, it hit bottom. All right, now take a hitch in the line. Okay. Uh, that's it. There's no drag now. Oh, you, you can't even see the highway from here. No, but if somebody sees us, they'll think we're fishing. Uh, well, how are you going to do it? Well, I'll tie a rope around myself. You hold on to the rope so the surf doesn't bang me into those rocks. All right. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe we should swim over to that big rock there and try it from there. But I can't swim. No. Well, I'll swim over and pull you across. Oh, How's no, that? I'm, I'm terribly afraid of water. 
All right, all right. I'll try it from here then. But you hang on to that rope, you understand? Yeah. If anything happens to me, baby, then you're really in trouble. I fastened the rope around my waist, then I waited for a backwash of surf, took a deep breath, and dove. My dive carried me down to the top of the car, and I hooked my arm through the front window and held myself against the force of the current. And then I looked in. It was a world of greenish twilight, but I could see everything. Frank Gassner's body was floating against the ceiling of the car, his arms and legs waving in the current, his coat flapping as if it were in a breeze. I looked away from the body and tried to find the purse. I hung onto the steering wheel and finally saw it on the floor, held on by the weight of the flashlight. When I went after it, the body brushed against me in a kind of a caress. I grabbed the purse, shoved myself out of the car and struggled to the surface and clambered aboard. You've got it. Oh, thank heaven. Of all the fool women, you would leave something like this in the car. Well, I guess we should start back. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's funny. Now that you got my purse back, there's no way to prove I was in Frank's car. Doesn't that worry you? Not a bit, baby. <laughs> I might refuse to go through with our deal. I might revoke that power of attorney. No, you won't. I still hold some aces, Belle. That night I started playing those aces. Belle Gassner had never known a man like me, only a husband that she'd hated. All I had to do was make one move, and she fell as hard as any of the rest of them. And having her crazy about me was the best way to keep her in line, better than any threats. I didn't have to worry about Belle Gassner. <laughs> Not anymore. And now I had the world by the tail on a downhill pull. When I got back to the Bayview Lodge later that night, Danny was waiting for me. So? What's the pitch, Gil? Ever hear of a character named Frank Gassner? Yeah, sure. Had a place in Reno once. Last I heard, he had a gambling joint here. Why, you working for him? No, his wife. Huh? Gassner's missing. He took a powder, uh, met with an accident nobody knows yet. So she's appointed me manager of the whole works with the uh, power of attorney. I, uh, I want you to front for me, Danny. Why do you want to front? Well, I, I don't want to be known as a gambler. This is my big chance to live first class. I want everything that goes with it. <laughs> Maybe I'll even join the racket club. Go social. Yeah, you always did have big ideas, Gil. How long is this going to last? Uh, long enough. Well, suppose this Gassner shows up someday. He won't. Uh, <laughs> uh, n n now, now, wait a minute, Danny. My, my hands are clean. I, I didn't do him, and I, I know what happened to him, but... I'm the only one who knows. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Gil. Okay, I'll play along. A week later, Bell introduced me around, and I took over. Danny did most of my work, and I began living high. I even bought a brand-new plane, a beautiful low-wing four-place job. And I took Bell up the first day. You know, flying's the only time I'm really myself, Belle. There's nothing like it. I know a little about it. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. I took lessons for a while. Frank was going to buy a plane. Well, how many hours do you have? Oh, almost 20. Oh, then you're solo, huh? <laughs> I wasn't very good. Just never could get the hang of it. Oh. Well, come on. Try it. Take oh, over. Oh, no, no. Oh, come on. Do you think I can? Why, sure. It's a cinch. Well. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> now, uh, try a turn to the left. Huh? Oh, no, no, not too steep. There we go. You got the feel of it? Oh, it's fine. Why, it's wonderful. Yeah, sure it is. You must have had a bad instructor. <laughs> but now, baby, you've got me. The money began rolling in. I bought a bachelor house on the beach. I joined the racket club. It seemed like there was no end to the good things I'd heard about in never known. Yet, slowly, little by little, a sour note crept in. Belle began to get on my nerves. She, she was so possessive, I began to hate the sight of her. Now, one night at the racket club, she was dancing with someone, and I was having a drink at the bar. Hello there, Gil Devon. What? Well, 
Hello. <laughs> I just knew those shoulders went with that handsome face. Are you uh, tied up tonight, or can you buy me that drink? Sure I can. Uh, tell me, why haven't I seen you around since uh, the first time? <laughs> I've been to Europe since then. I'll be here for a few weeks, though, then I'm going to New York for the winter. Oh, I thought this was your home. It's one of them. Daddy's got four houses scattered around the country. Oh. Look, uh, never mind the drink. Let's go outside. Sure. <laughs> You've uh, got an edge on me. I, I don't know your name. <laughs> Allison Price. You know something? You're something I've always imagined would happen to me. Really? You didn't seem to think so that first night. No, well, I I had something else on my mind, something that had to come first so that you could happen. And uh, what was that? Money. A girl like you can only come along when a man's got money to burn. And on the way home that night, I was in real trouble. Where were you? I saw you leave with Allison Price. I told you, Belle, we were outside talking. I warn you, Gil. If you ever think of leaving me, I'll go to the police and tell them we both killed Frank, and I mean it, Gil. Oh, calm down, Belle. I'm not interested in that Price girl. Are you sure? Oh, I sure. As soon as you're legally a widow, we, we'll get married. That's a promise, Belle. I felt like a steel trap had closed on me. Aunt Belle was dangerous. She had to be handled right. I planned everything down to the last detail and then waited until one night pretty late. Yeah, I'm... Gil, they found him. What are you talking about? Found who? Gassner. Gassner's body's been found. The car's down the roadways at the bottom of a cliff. Somebody spotted it from the air. It must have been an accident. Yeah. Look, uh, should I call Mrs. Gassner? Chief Arnold's not gonna tell her till he's poked around. No, uh... No, Danny, I, I'll call her. Um, thanks for letting me know. Hello, Belle. I'm so glad you called, darling. I was just going to bed. Well, you're not going to bed now. You're going to leave town. Why, Gil? I can't tell you why over the telephone. I'll pick you up in ten minutes. All right, darling. No, 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 wait a minute. You better take your car. Pack a bag and drive out to the airport. Don't let anyone see you. I'll meet you there. <laughs> They found Frank last night. Danny called. Oh, is that all? Well, what a relief. I, I couldn't imagine Wait a why minute, you'd... Belle. Danny says that Arnold's already figured out from the wreckage that Gassner wasn't driving the car. But that doesn't mean they'll suspect me. And the autopsy shows that he was dead a long time before the car went over the cliff. They know it was carbon monoxide. No. And somebody on your street saw you walking home that night. Then Chief Arnold knows I was lying. Oh, wh what'll I do? That's why I ask you to meet me out here. You can take my plane. But I'm no pilot, Gil. You can do it, dear. You can fly up the coast past Frisco across the state line to Medford, Oregon. Well, what shall I do there? Stay there. You'll be out of the state. Then when I straighten things out, you can come back. But I, I, I can't do... It's the only thing you do, Belle. Now, trust me, darling. It was barely dawn and there wasn't a soul around. Belle stayed in her car while I got the plane ready. I rolled it out of the hangar and parked it just over a water drain, and then I opened the valves to the gasoline tanks and let almost all of it drain out so she'd have only enough fuel for 15 minutes of flight. I rolled the plane out on the runway and got it warmed up, and then Bell ran across, and I helped her climb in. Now, just follow this course I've marked. Uh, yes? Stay over the ocean at least an hour. Why, Gil? Well, I don't want you spotted. It's oh, safer that oh. way. This engine runs like a wristwatch. All right, darling. Oh, you're okay, honey. Don't worry about it. Now, depend on me. I, I, now, don't I, start crying, dear. You, you, you have to get out of here. I, Gil. Goodbye, darling. She took off to the west and then flew northwest over the ocean. <laughs> what a trusting fool she was. When I looked at my wristwatch driving back to town, it was 18 minutes since the plane took off. By then, it was down somewhere in the ocean out of gas. It would sink at once, and Belle couldn't swim. Well, it wasn't such a terrible way to die. And Chief Arnold would figure it this way. 
Bell had heard that Frank's body was found, she lost her head and ran because she had murdered him. <laughs> Case closed. It was a nice day. Nice day to take Allison swimming. Or for a drive up the beach. When I got to town, nothing was open yet except the drugstore, so I stopped and bought a paper. Folded it under my arm and started back to my car. And then I spotted Chief Arnold coming toward me, grinning like an ape. I wondered what was on the old fathead's mind. Hey, hey, hey! Mr. Devon! What? Uh, who, who there? Well, uh, hello, Chief. Uh, you look happy about something. Uh, Gil Devon. I arrest you for the murder of Frank Gassner. What? <laughs> Are you nuts? What gives you the idea that I had anything... Never seen this before, Devon. Uh, uh, sure, that, that's my army identification bracelet. I, huh? I haven't seen it for weeks. I, I'm always losing it. Well, it's handy for us cops that you do. <laughs> this time you lost it in Frank Gastner's car. Oh, uh, say, isn't that Allison Price? <laughs> Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> She's got under your skin, too. Shut up. Uh -oh. Shut up, you flat foot. <laughs> here. Uh, Come here. I want to talk to you. <laughs> oh, beautiful girl. <laughs> and so near. So near. And yet, so far. <laughs> Say, here's a real spring tonic for baseball fans. A new 32-page baseball book just off the press. Packed full of tips and information on America's favorite sport. Where can you get it? At the Richfield Gasoline Dealer Station. And this new Richfield baseball book is absolutely free. It contains Major League and many minor league schedules, World Series box scores, and Major League standings, baseball questions and answers, seating diagrams of 16 baseball stadiums, this new, colorful, rich field baseball book is a gold mine of baseball lore you won't want to miss. A storehouse of fascinating information that fits right in your pocket. And remember, it's absolutely free. Ask your Richfield gasoline dealer for your copy tomorrow. And while you're about it, ask him about Richfield All Point Safety Service, the complete scientific lubrication service and safety checkup that prepares your car for the warm weather ahead. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson and has tonight presented Something for Nothing by H.V. Dixon, adapted for radio by Sylvia Richards. Featured in the cast were Bill Conrad as Gill, Ann Morrison as Bell, Francis Cheney as Allison, Will Gere as Arnold, Rick Vallon as the bartender, and Paul Fries as Danny. Special music was arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week. You are being whirled through the streets of New Orleans by the gay revelers of Mardi Gras. But somewhere in the crowd, dressed as a clown, is a murderer. Your murderer. From whom there is no escape. <laughs> Next week at this time, the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York invites you to escape with the story of a man caught up in the night of terror through his complete innocence. As John and Gwen Bagney tell it in their exciting story, The Man Who Stole the Bible. Be listening. Goodbye then until this same time next week when once again we offer you... Escape. I'm Hanlon speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Escape.